In this Unusual Whales platform video, we are going to cover the Gamma Exposure Dashboard. Now simply put, Gamma is the rate of change of a given contract's delta. To make a bit of a physics analogy here, delta would represent your velocity and Gamma would represent acceleration. Now Gamma hits its peak at the money. As the spot price of the underlying stock moves around, at the money strikes will have the maximum gamma value on the options chain. But there are situations where the total gamma accumulated on any given strike might be larger than the gamma of an at the money strike. This just means there's a ton of contracts there in the open interest, a lot of trading going on. The basic expression of gamma exposure on the first chart here shows you that the total gamma exposure for Amazon in our example here has largely been positive over the last six months, maybe even longer. Now, if we roll back here to September, for example, to around early to mid-October 2023, we can see these brief periods here where total gamma was negative rather than positive. The easiest way to kind of think of this total GEX or gamma exposure, positive or negative, is to think about the option market counterparty, commonly referred to as market maker. The way to think about market maker reactions here is in a positive gamma environment, the market maker is gonna sell into rallies and buy into dips to offset their total exposure. In a negative gamma environment, similar to what we looked at here in September to October 2023, the market maker is going to sell into dips and buy into rallies to offset their exposure. So these negative gamma environments can lead to higher price volatility because not only do you have the market participants buying and selling options and shares as they normally would, but the market maker can frequently be acting in alignment with the market participants instead of counteracting them. You can kind of see a few points where there's a little bit lower gamma exposure. And again, these small points where gamma exposure was net negative. But for the most part, for most of recent history on Amazon anyway, the GEX environment has been positive. So market makers have been gently selling into rips and gently buying into dips. The next graph here is gamma exposure by strike. Now, one important thing to consider here is this table ignores expiration dates of these contracts. So for example here, if there's a lot of action on the $185 strike, that is valuable information to have, but you don't immediately know the expiration dates of that call and put gamma. Now, with that being said, gamma is a short-term phenomenon. We can even go look at the options chains here and see that the nearer dated options have higher gamma than further dated options. So for example, here in the Amazon chains, looking at the expiration for 5-31-2024, which at the time of recording is just one day away, the gamma for the $180 strike, pretty close to at the money, is 0.135. Now, if we go further in time, let's say the July 5th expiration date, that gamma drops significantly to 0 0.027. So we can see fairly clearly that the near dated call gamma is much higher than the far dated call gamma. So back to our gamma exposure by strike, it is worth knowing that the expirations that are closest in time, as of right now, are likely to be the biggest contributors to these bars. And if it turns out that one of those bars is really large and all the open interest happens to be further dated, it just speaks to the sizing of those particular trades. So here we see that at the $185 strike, there's this big gamma bar. If this happened to be in December 2024, for example, we could say, wow, there's a ton of open interest here because we know that near dated expirations have way more gamma than longer dated. So next, let's phase out this net gamma and just look at the call and put gamma. Puts on the left, calls on the right. This shows you by strike where those gamma concentrations are. So here on the call side, the biggest gamma 
concentration was at the $185 strike, while for the puts, the biggest gamma concentration is on the $180 strike. You can see there's this sort of curve here from top to bottom on the strikes, because remember, the at the money strike has the highest gamma value regardless of expiration. So you'll see as we move in price from strike to strike, either up or down, the further away from at the money we get, gamma exposure tends to drop. Now for a bit of a different view here, let's flip the table from call and put gamma individually to just net gamma. This will show you the call gamma plus the put gamma. This is a bit of a naive calculation meant to show you where we've built up open interest by strike, where that gamma is really concentrated. What's interesting when you look at the net gamma view is that it's showing us that the $185 strike holds by far the most gamma. It's likely that market makers that we discussed earlier are long this contract. Market makers are suppressing volatility around that 185 level. As the stock price moves toward the strike and gamma rises, market makers will be forced to sell more shares, suppressing that upside movement. As the stock moves back down, they will slowly buy back those shorted shares, overall suppressing any large stock movement volatility. We can actually see here on the daily chart how those daily candles are pretty uniform and small. There's been a steady uptrend without much volatility day to day. For another example here, here's a look at Meta's daily gamma exposure, which has had much less of a positive gamma environment than the Amazon we viewed. When Meta was in a consistently large positive GEX environment, the share price moved in that same steady uptrend we observed in Amazon. But when the GEX environment is significantly less positive and at times negative, the price action on Meta becomes quite volatile with much larger swings both up and down in the share price like we see here on this yellow line. To give a closer look at this volatility suppression by market makers, let's take this Amazon chart down to a tighter time frame on the 15 minute from May 22nd and look what happened when Amazon approached that $185 mark on the underlying stock price. Now remember, our assumption is that the vast amount of open interest on that $185 call strike rests with market makers. As Amazon breached above 185 on the underlying, market makers gently sold shares to suppress volatility above the strike. This led to a gentle intraday pullback in the Amazon stock price. However, if you refer back to that daily chart, we can see fairly clearly, again, that Amazon has enjoyed a steady uptrend with very little downside volatility. This is the result of our positive GEX environment and volatility suppression by those market makers. Now remember, the assumption of gamma exposure is that most of the open interests on these strikes are risk management plays by institutional investors. But we also have to keep in mind some trading activities are done by active traders. So some of this open interest encompasses them as well. I'll offer more perspective on this with the next charts. And finally, the next chart shows us the gamma exposure by both strike and expiry. Now this one may possibly be the most instantly useful for gamma exposure information because it could potentially show you some places where you might find a mean reversion trade or you might find that speculators are overpowering the potential for mean reversion that they may just be running over market participants trying to fade the move at the top you can select which expiration date you want to view but for now we're going to stay on the nearest dated expiration even though it's not currently the largest source of gamma, we know that short dated options can be like a hot potato. You don't just hold on to that bad boy and pray to the market gods it goes the direction you want. Participants trading these options are likely to be doing faster trades in and out. So one thing we can do here is hide the net gamma and just look at the call and put gamma again to see the biggest call strikes and the biggest put strikes. 
Now again, this is based on open interest and gets built out each morning when open interest updates. So we can see that at open, the $185 strike has the highest call gamma, while the $180 strike has the highest put gamma. Down below, we can see that, for example, the $170 strike is about even. So these are kind of close. If we turn on the net gamma and turn off call and put gamma, that 170 strike should be about flat. And here we can see that it indeed is. Now on the $185 strike, there's absolutely zero splitting of hairs. There's significantly more call gamma than put gamma. And shown again here on net gamma, it's very clear that call traders are in control on the $185 strike for the 531 2024 expiration. What makes these values interesting is the nature of short-term speculating. For example, a trader who's purchased the 185 strike calls on Amazon to speculate on the upside. If Amazon was trading at, let's say, you know, 183, then traded up to 185, a 185 strike call buyer might be looking to monetize that contract as soon as the price trades up into that 185 area. They may say, hey, look, this contract was out of the money and now it's in the money. The most rapid price appreciation on the contract has already occurred. Fast money traders may be looking to get out or reposition given the nearness of the expiration. So we may see holders of long calls fall off in this area. So to give an idea of what I mean with that, let's go back to the Amazon chart. So looking at the Amazon chart and zooming way in, we can see that on the beginning of the day of Wednesday, May 22nd, the market opened and there was some price appreciation pretty much immediately. Traders got the price of Amazon up to a little above 185. And in fact, the high of day here was right around 185.22. But you'll notice here on the five minute chart that it didn't hold on to this 185 level for very long. We tapped above 185 and then Amazon had a nice little pullback as low as 183.52 before bouncing and continuing its downtrend. One potential explanation of this is that long call speculators on that stacked $185 strike monetized their contracts and took profit here when we tapped above. So what happens here is when your counterparty, the market maker in this example, was short a call by selling the long call you opened to you. They don't want that directional exposure. So to offset their short call, they buy some stock to hedge it. As soon as you sell that call, they're buying that call back. Once you no longer have a long call, the market maker no longer has a short call either. Once you realize that profit on your long call, the counterparty no longer has this hedging requirement, so they dump their equity exposure, which can have a negative impact on the price of the underlying stock as we see here. So when you have enough of this action happening, notated by how large the gamma exposure is at any given strike, Sometimes we can see what happened here occur. The spot price reaching the strike in question, here we're talking the $185 strike. We can see some pullback potential and mark that as a possible place to take profit if you're in a gamma exposure based trade. All right, everyone, I hope that helps you better understand what exactly you're seeing in these gamma exposure charts and how you can relate it to the options chains and the stock chart itself to garner some insight into how you can utilize gamma exposure, both in picking a strike to trade, as well as points on the chart to take profit.